Hey everybody, welcome to Little Mix Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Well, welcome back, Tyler. We have we took two weeks off, so two weeks ago, real life was getting in the way. Last week, I didn't feel like doing it. I just had no interest in doing it. So, sorry guys. <laughs> there, there was just other things going on. It was a busy day and I needed a break. So, we took a little bit of time off. We're back uh, and uh, we remember how to do podcasts. Honestly, shocking that... This particular sync collection in OBS, we shut it up. Didn't need to redo the transitions at all. Really weird. It, that's why this whole situation feels weird because normally I have to spend a half an hour doing the transitions again or the not transitions with the transformations. And uh, this time I didn't. And it feels like something's going to go horrifically wrong. I mean, just like the, the computer's going to blow up or Tyler's going to walk in with a man bun. Dude, look, <laughs> Sorry, I'm still, look. I'm still just thinking of the man bun, man. <laughs> look, I'm knocking on wood right now because like, I don't want anything to happen on my end. Like, if my computer freezes, I swear on God, I'm going to just get up, walk away, probably take a massive, massive hit of some marijuana so I don't come back in here and just punch the hell out of my computer. Because I don't know why, but last night it did that. And I, I, I don't know why. And it can't happen again. All right, computer? You hear me? I think it understands. It's not as if your your audio has never been borked. So <laughs> it's gonna be fine. All right, don't don't go all Gal uh, don't go all Gallagher on your computer. Now, there's a reference. Do you do you know who Gallagher was, Tyler? So I'm gonna assume you're not talking about the Gallagher family from Shameless. No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so oh, wait, he hold knew on. the. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I. <laughs> think i know what you're talking about can't remember the movie no it wasn't um, a movie he was a comedian um it came out in the 90s right he was around in the 90s but he, like i said it wasn't a movie it was a, he's a comedian his that's his name oh, oh, it was no. his name uh so, his entire stick was he had a watermelon and a sledgehammer and he smashed the watermelon and sprayed the audience with the watermelon the stupidest thing um <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, the funniest thing is he knew the little rascals. He didn't know Gallagher. I'm just. <laughs> That's the type of episode you guys are beginning. Oh, it, it, I do know this dude. I just did the his. Okay. I know him from the from the thing where he does the pronunciation thing of different words. Uh, oh, and jokes bomb, about it, 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 and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes around. Oh, God. <laughs> That's where this I know be, him, bro. This is going to be an interesting podcast. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the Linux cast, in case you didn't know. I mean, <laughs> it's not It's not where we're just, we're just going to bring up shit from the 90s, and, and you guys are going to have to know about this, because like half of my audience is, wasn't even born in the 90s. Uh, the, the other half was using Linux in the 90s. So we got a good split. Anyways, we talk about Linuxy things. We're going to do so today. We will eventually get to the main topic, I promise. But first, before we do... Uh, a couple things. First, if you're listening on a podcast catcher of some kind, uh, leave us a review if you can. Specifically, if you're on Apple Podcasts, head on over or scroll down or whatever it is in the app. Leave us a star review and write a review for us. It would really help the, the podcast out. So we'd really appreciate that if you did that. And secondly, we have to talk about what we've been doing the, these last few weeks. Because we haven't actually talked very much in the last couple of weeks. We've both been very, very busy. And uh, Tyler, I have a feeling, has some stories to tell. So Tyler, are you still in love with NixOS? And what's been going on with you, my friend? Yeah. Well, since it's been a while, um, a lot's been going on. So I am looking at uh, potentially converting a van to be like a like a solar like kind of off grid like small livable space so i can go like about 18 hours away and have a nice place to like kind of hold up in while i build a house so i've been working on that at the same time also selling my car then i also want to eventually start a game project and so i've been looking at different game engines that are going to be the i'm trying to pick one based off of the one that's going to be the fastest for me to implement the stuff that i want to implement so i had to do some playing around with unreal unity and godot and for the unreal unity test just to ensure i wasn't running into bugs caused by it on linux i installed windows so i could try them out 
because if anyone doesn't know this, like Unity and Unreal, yes, they do work on Linux, but your odds of encountering a bug are like three times more likely just because they don't really like do their own development and testing and stuff like that on Linux. They just allow you to run it there. But yeah, so, so, so far, Unreal would be probably the easiest one to go with. However, it eats up video memory like none other. I don't, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Unreal Engine 5.3 will eat up six gigs of VRAM with a basic scene. What? Huh? What? Okay. So yeah, been messing around with all of that, but back on NixOS, probably, probably going to be using Unity or Unreal just because they speed up development a lot, but yeah. Also, you know, Unity kind of burnt their company, so you know that's a whole other thing. But yeah, I'm looking forward to one day playing a game from Tyler Studios. You should definitely call it Tyler Studios. <laughs> well, I was thinking like if I do, if I do actually start making games, it's it's definitely going to be Zany Studios. Tyler Studios does it does have a ring to it too, but I think Zany Studios is probably I don't know too far ahead. I got so much stuff going on. That I'm working on and got going on. So what about you, man? Please tell me you're a little bit more chillaxed than all the crap I got going on. I, I've i been having the same problems for two months. So I, I have serious ADD when it comes to the thing that I'm using. So like I've settled on a distro. OpenSUSE is a distro. It's fantastic. We don't need to talk about it. But I can't settle on a window manager or a desktop environment. I keep switching back and forth. I keep going between different things. And it's just nothing just feels right to me, right? And I don't know why. So, like, I really like Hyperland. Like, I really like Hyperland, specifically now that they've added the ability to make the workspaces function like Xmonad and Qtile. There, there's a command for that now, and it works fantastically well. Like, the if Hyperland was actually stable, it'd be like, the perfect window manager it has a ton of awesome stuff going for it tons of features you can customize it to the the ends I, i've even learned to love waybar like i i started out hating waybar because it just i couldn't get into css again i didn't want to and i was expecting it to be more like polybar i've learned to love it it's really good the problem is that hyperland just it can't stay stable every time it updates there's something new that goes wrong and uh, this last time for whatever reason, anytime I'm capturing the screen some or whatever, just randomly, entire thing completely crashes and pushes me back out to SDD, SDDM. It's done it now three times. It did it once yesterday during the lug. It did it twice uh, last night. So I went back into Plasma 6. Now, Plasma 6 has been stable, but I'm not happy in Plasma 6. I'm just not... I don't feel happy in a desktop environment. So I want I want tiling back, and I, I don't know. There's not enough good Wayland compositors. Cause like I've dedicated myself, I'm gonna use Wayland. All the XORG stuff seems to be dying. It's not getting updated or whatever. And I've transitioned everything that I need to over to Wayland now. You know, I've gotten my menus and all this stuff to work and I'm just used to using Wayland now. So I've been trying to focus on just using Wayland stuff, but damn it if, I, if it's making it really, really hard you know, because because there's not enough good selection out there, and the the off the like the, the the smaller compositors are all even more unstable than Hyperland is. It's just and and Darius, I have pushed bug reports. I have like four or five bug reports there. I I, I will publish the one that's crashing when I have a chance. I just haven't had a chance yet. I, I do that stuff, and it's great. And and Vaxry does a great, fantastic job of fixing the bugs. Like, he really does a really good job. But it's developed so fast, he just keeps creating more bugs. <laughs> like, like just that's the way it is. I can't, I can't help it. So I, I'm just un, I'm unhappy right now with everything, and it's going to see me back on Xorg is what it's going to do. It's going to see me back on an Xorg window managers what is that's the that's the end place that's where all this ends is me back on x monad bitching and complaining about haskell that's what that's where this ends all things haskell apparently <laughs> like like haskell is the end of the, is the destination for us all um, dt was right all along damn it um so yeah that's what i've been struggling with that uh, other than that it's just been a shit ton of fucking work like 
I, I can't, I've edited, I think I edited 180,000 words in the past week. It's been a sense. So the, the, <laughs> we have six editors at work and then we have the, the editor in chief who does no, I can't say that on the. I can't say that when I, I shouldn't badmouth my boss when I'm being recorded. I shouldn't do that. Uh, but anyways, we have we have six editors, and th for whatever fucking stupid reason, screw it. I'm gonna do it anyways. The fucking jackass that sits above us and 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 does absolutely jack shit decided to give three of the editors the week and the next two weeks off. Three of them, so they cut the workforce down in half. And that means the other, th me and the two other guys, both of who are fucking morons, uh, no offense guys, I, I would literally call that to them face because they don't know how to spell worth a shit. Like, you're an editor and you don't know how to spell, like, just stop. <laughs> Anyways, I'm All right, so, boys, I'm before so he finishes, I just want to go ahead and make it clear, but... Before Matt loses his job, it would be <laughs> extremely helpful if you went to the shop, supported in any way you can. He will need supplemental income here soon. I'm so getting fired. I can't help it. I'm so I'm I'm burnt out. I am sick of staring at Google Docs, like with a passion. Like it's so I, I I'm. Well, look, <clears throat> probably the podcast is not the right time to do this, but just so everyone publicly knows I've made the offer and you have an out, you do deserve a nice vacation. If you want to save money and have a nice vacation, do have a vacation house. You're more than welcome to come to. We can well, meet up, have a get, party. If I get fired, I'll be, I'll be on the first train out. <laughs> Other than that, I, just, I can't take a vacation because I won't give... I was told... That he couldn't take a vacation, but now I know why, because they'd already given these three douchebags a, a vacation all the same. Apparently, they're going to somewhere together. That's the reason why they all three needed it at the same time. I don't know. Uh, I didn't even know that those other three talked to each other, because th we're all remote. Like, none of us are working in an office somewhere where we know each other. We, we talked via z fucking Zoom. What? Uh, hold on. That's the weird... Who? I've never... What? You have... You go on vacation with friends from a re remote job? Like, I've... That's new. I've it, never heard it's that. fucking weird, but apparently they've been talking off, you know, whatever, and have become friends, and they've decided to go on a vacation together. I don't know. It's it's weird. Anyway, it's, right. it's, it's the fucking stupidest thing. Just to let you know, I don't want... I, I have been actually reading books, because I, I it's weird, because I read all that stuff and edit it, but I still... I, I read to relax. I've been reading a lot of words. But anyways, uh, now that I've had my rant, and you guys don't care about any of that stuff. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and move kidding? on. That was probably pro the most entertaining thing <laughs> this podcast will have to offer. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Matt bitching about his job. That's great. Uh, anyways, that's it for that section. Let's go ahead and jump into the main topic. So uh, we've talked about system d in the past but we've never done a as far as i remember a dedicated podcast about system d now the way that i i, I imagined this a couple different ways so uh, i thought about point counterpoint but you're right that probably would have just become a bit instead we're gonna have an honest conversation about system d and its alternatives because we'll talk a little bit about i think the reasons why you'd want to use system d the complaints against it and why people choose to use other things and then we can talk a little bit about the other things that are available just for fun because uh, there are quite a few other init systems out there and uh, we can talk about a little bit of our experiences with those things as well so let's talk so tyler in general what are your thoughts on uh system d good or bad i think it's a fine init system i think it's probably done more good for linux than most people will ever admit like especially the people that dislike it. Like they'll never admit all of the good things that it's done for Linux. Most people don't even know how much it's helped Linux. I think it's just fine. I don't know. A lot of people say that they've had a lot of like problems with system D breaking. I haven't had that problem. I don't think I've ever had system D break. I think. I mean, maybe like I've maybe one services time. break. It, well, yeah, but that's, totally different like that's that that's like you blaming flat pack for a flat pack not running 
It's like, n- n- no, the developer could just have pushed a flat pack that doesn't work. Like, I don't know. I really don't get a lot of the hate that it, that it receives really just a fine in that system. I find it actually easier to work with than a lot of others. I mean, run it is kind of similar in its simplicity, uh, to understand like, because, because system D is so unanimous, it's very, it doesn't take long to get familiar with how to use it and run it is kind of similar in that it's a totally different scheme of how, how you're going to do things, but it's very simple to get onboarded and understand the mentality behind what you're doing. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think system D is just useful. I don't know. What about you? All right. So there's two main complaints against system D. Like, like, so Dan points out that it's not in this system. It has a whole bunch of other stuff. And that's one of the complaints is that it has other stuff, right? Uh, people who are very interested in the Unix philosophy don't care for the fact that it does other things, you know, you know, it, it does journaling and has a whole bunch of other functions and stuff. And, and they, they keep adding additional components to it, like manage, you know, managing the encryption and stuff of, of your home directory and all this stuff. Right. So the, one of the key complaints against it is that it's bloated. So, bloat the other one and i think probably the bigger one is because because people use bloated shit all the time i mean people are using kde can't really complain about bloat okay just (laughs) hold on there but i I think the biggest one that people complain about is that it's primarily developed by red hat which is you know obviously a corporation they're firmly in control of it and you know they their primary mean you know reason for existing is to make money right so they're it's a very anti-corporatist viewpoint from a lot of people who don't want to use something that is you know that firmly in the control of a corporation now personally i couldn't give two shits like i don't care tyler are you raising your hand <laughs> go ahead <laughs> what do we raise our hand i have a I, this may be the most non pc thing i say but i think that mentality is retarded the pro like the problem with system d is that it has too many components like do people not understand that like the idea behind system d is that it's a standardized init system and well and more than that but it's standardized so the more bits and bobs they add that means more users don't have to worry about it because it's going to be standardized and managing it will be very easy for the applications that you use so like isn't that a good thing like the means if programs and your systems built to run on things that most run on developers can automate things that save you time and effort like no one really wants to go in and mess with like you know like no one really wants to manage their encryption of their drive or like whatever like all the time you don't really want to manage certain like i don't i don't get the complaint that it's bloated like you're going to have the same thing like you're going to journal like most people are going to journal their systems why not have it just all be standardized together like i don't think that's a problem kind of the same thing as the core utils like you can replace them there are alternatives to each core util but it's kind of nice that they're all packaged together and it's a standard set of utilities we all use kind of helps am i like am i making a ridiculous argument here i don't think so but let's look at it from their perspective shall we people who care about that perspective tend to want to have separate things that do everything so they they want their NIST system to just be their NIST system they want the you know every little piece of their system to be very separate and to do just one thing one well because they make the assumption that if something does more than one thing that it can't focus on doing the thing that it's supposed to do as well as it possibly could in the most efficient manner and is there validity to the argument that because system D does so many other things that it doesn't do well as an init system? Maybe, but I well, also probably on. I not. don't know. Cause he, he, here's a, here's a good point to make. 
we complain about Firefox all the time because Mozilla is not focusing on it. They're focusing on a whole bunch of other stuff and Firefox is not where it could be. I don't really see that kind of conversation, like, you know, the back and forth we have about that with system D. Like, I really don't see people talking about it being like, well, I mean, if they would just focus on the, you know, init system, it would be good. Like, I really don't see that. I really don't see many people using system D complaining about it. I see a lot of people who used to use system D or just don't use system D complaining about it. But really, well, don't. so you ask somebody who uses like run it or open RC or S six, and they'll tell you that another benefit of using an alternative in system is that it makes your computer faster. Now I have used run it. I've used open RC. I've used SysV init. I, I, I hold on a second before I know I call it SysV init. It's sys five. SysV init just sounds better in my head. It's sys five. Okay. It's, it's SysV init. Okay. It's SysV init. Let's be I call it Sysvian it, but every time I call it Sysvian it, there's somebody in the comment section that says, Matt, you're pronouncing it wrong. Okay, well, sure, I probably am, but I I, I don't know, I prefer Sysvian it. It sounds cooler. But anyways, it's, I've used all of those things, and I've never not once ever seen my computer run faster. Now, I didn't time it, but I assume that if it was like super faster than SysMD, I would have noticed. Like supposedly it's during startup where you really truly see the benefits of it like you can save like five seconds off your boot time but if i don't know about y'all but i i'm okay with an extra five seconds you know like five seconds is not gonna be something that i and maybe other people have a habit of sitting there in front of their computer while it boots up and just you know waiting but I don't. <laughs> there are other things that I can do. You know, I, I turn my computer on. I can, you know, go, you know, coffee if I drink coffee or I can tur turn my phone. I have other things that I can do. And that extra five seconds isn't preventing me from doing any of those things or a adding time where I have to go look for something else. It's just not, it's just, it's just a weird, <laughs> like, like, if it saved me te f um, a minute or two minutes, whatever, fine sure or if it made the whole system run snappier i i get it but that argument of it you know running faster doesn't really get get it for me and the whole idea of it of system d being bloated if the situation came to pass where it looked like system d was you know not a good init system anymore then you they'd have an argument but has anybody ever looked at system d like and think thought like well you know it doesn't do init good it does right i mean it does yeah uh, and i also don't understand like the whole performance like if we're talking about performance as a metric with your init system like you're running a terribly old machine like the performance like it's kind of like it's kind of like the zen kernel you know like switching to it like yeah you'll get like you know on average like 0.25 percent more performance awesome does it really matter all that much no not really like no you probably won't ever really tell a difference on paper there's a difference but i mean who 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 cares about like a you know a 300 nanosecond improvement like well, i mean awesome. if you yeah if you're building a system from the software side to be as minimal as possible I understand like sure but a lot of people who use one of the minimal in it systems will go on to install plasma or you know gnome or whatever all both of which are not minimal you know they'll or they'll go on to just not have a minimal system whatsoever but they'll still use the alternative init system and that's fine you I, neither one of us are arguing that you shouldn't use an init system of your choice you use whatever you want i'm glad that you have the alternative to use run it in sys5 and whatever you want to use that's fantastic choice is always a good thing we don't want there's the there's a idea that because those other exist it pushes the guys who develop system d to be better i mean whether or not that's ever true or you know actually happens i don't know but i'm glad that those things exist but i think my argument 
for this is that not that those shouldn't exist, but more that the re reasons people tend to use them over systemd are silly. Like, they just, they seem like silly reasons. And we, there's a reason why we call them protest distros, because if they're, they're protesting systemd, and I think a lot of people don't know, I, I think there's some people who have the, you know, the arguments that we just, we, we mentioned, but other people use, like, Devon or you know, even MX Linux uses something different than systemd. You know, they use those things without, they just don't care. They want to use something that's a little bit more backwater than you know, a standard distro. So that's what they use. And it doesn't really matter to them, you know, the initials. They're using it because it's it's cool to be a rebel. Contrarian. Like, that, yeah. that's, that's yeah. really what it is. It's all about being contrarian. And I don't know. There's something to be said for that. But, like, also... At the same time, you can't, I don't know, it's, it's really hard to have a conversation about like whether or not any of these are better than the other one, because they all do the same job. Like when we're talking specifically about init systems, they, they all do the same thing. Like they start a service. Well, yeah, where you'd, if, if you were really going to do a job of comparing them the best thing to do would be to compare the syntax for starting and managing your services, right? Because they all do that in a slightly different way. But Well, and the syntax for the service itself could, yeah. can be different. But there's there's also a, a, a good point to be made for the fact that, like, you know, services have to be either handwritten or made for you by the developers. If you're not using something standardized, then that means most likely you're going to have to be willing to write your own services. And who the hell wants to do that most of the time? Come on now. Like, what? Well, if you use something like MX Linux and you're using this the, the non-systemd version, because they do allow you to use systemd if you want to, then the amount of, like... One of the things we say about MX Linux, other than the fact that they've somehow gamed the DistroWatch thing, is that they've had to make a whole bunch of tools to do a lot of stuff, right? And we always say that, well, MX Linux has a lot of really cool tools, right? Well, one of the reasons why they had to create tools was because they don't use systemd as their main, uh, on their main ISO. They So, like, for example, they they created a cron job tool, right? And which is cool, which would be cool no matter what. But one of the reasons why they had to do that is because things like just downloading Crony on MX Linux won't work because Crony assumes systemd, right? And it doesn't have systemd. It uses whatever, I don't even know what MX Linux uses. It's probably OpenRC, I'm guessing. It's OpenRC, maybe it's run it. It's one of those two. But anyways, you know, it's just, it's pieces of software like that that make the, the, assum the assumption of systemd that requires then the distro to the distro or the user to you know work around the fact that you don't actually have systemd and that that causes a lot of pain for regular users but i don't think that that's a argument against any of those because none of those are for regular users unless you've still i mean unless you go to distro watch and assume that because mx linux is at the top of the list that it's automatically the best you know <laughs> I suppose then you're probably a regular user, but they they have worked around that by creating the tools. I suppose, but I don't know. The, the for for me, the creation of services on System D is always something that, like I, I've done it maybe four times in the entire time I've used Linux is to create my own services. That's like literally all I've ever done it for most of the time because if your your software needs to create a service or in the background, it creates it itself. Now I've I've had to start services. And you know, enable them, whatever that that happens a lot. But actually, sitting down, going into the the dot config slash systemd directory, and actually creating a user service that doesn't happen that often. But it would happen a lot more often if I were on OpenRC or Run It or whatever. And I I have no clue how to create a service in either of those. By the way, uh, even though I used Gentoo for a month, I never, you know, even tr attempted to get into that. I don't know, like I. I, I still would be interested to find out if we if we end up having OpenRC run it or something like that have ubiquitous or close to as ubiquitous service support because that that that's really the problem is a lot of programs just don't like they just don't have it that's the main big problem with using something alternative for most people because 
again, most people don't care enough to want to write their own stuff or just have to bother with managing their init system, really interacting with it. Okay. I'll let you read Steve's oh super God. chat. <laughs> I'll let you do that. <laughs> I agree, man. It is cat food. It, it, it is cat food. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, also, Arnav, you keep pinging me. I He says, I have an error where a stop job is running for UUID 1000 while shutting down in system D and while turning on, I had rebuilding dynamic linker cache while turning on. That stop job thing happens all the time. Like that's not something that everybody sees that. Just leave it at the Plymouth screen. You'll never see it. It might take, a, and it doesn't happen all the time for everything. You just have it once in a while. But if that's why you left system D, that's okay. Uh, well, but hold I, on, know, hold uh, on. So we have someone who had a, comment i'm just gonna go ahead and show it because this this is like actually what a lot of people say so i don't i'll i'll butcher your username if i say it but he said f system d and its creator why like and there are actually people who hold that opinion out there i don't understand it like what what happened did he poop in your cheerios like I'm I'm very confused. I don't get the severe hate that like, I, 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 I will never understand it. Like, what? Well, uh, the thing is, is, like, a lot of people point out, well, like, oh, he works for Microsoft. Well, he works for Microsoft now, but when he created System D, he didn't work for Microsoft. He worked for Red Hat. I, I, also, I also don't think that was him going to Microsoft is not a problem. Like, if Microsoft pays you a shit ton of money, like... <laughs> maybe people are unaware but like a lot of people have to use windows in their day job waffles <laughs> my, father. my father and now he's come for me <laughs> oh it's the best thing ever <laughs> My, like my name is Indigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great thing. But, the, the, but I mean, okay. So let's let's dive in then to the corporate argument, right? And, and people have there is legitimate concern about corporate influence on all things Linux. There's legitimate concern that the Linux Foundation is overly corporatized, for lack of a better word. And there are legitimate concerns about all that. There's legitimate concerns that Red Hat has too much control over the main features of Linux. Things like SystemD, things like Wayland, things like Pipewire, Pulse Audio. You get the idea, right? There's legitimate concern over all of that stuff. Where I... like. You, you can be very concerned about that, you know, the, because Red Hat tends to stick its foot in its mouth every six months, does something that really pisses the community off. It happens a lot. Uh, obviously, uh, influence from Microsoft and Google and Apple and on the Linux kernel, not necessarily always a good thing. But where I come through with all this stuff, and specifically not only just SystemD, but everything, is that if we didn't have Red Hat pushing things forward if we didn't have the money coming in from uh, you know corporate entities all over the place canonical and whatever we'd still be using elsa you know <laughs> like like just think about this you'd, you'd still be using elsa like like dr Crenshaw just actually just said elsa you know uh, like nobody wants to control their audio through a configuration file maybe the nix os users would be very happy doing that but <laughs> the rest of us are normal people we don't want to do it that way it was corporate influence that allowed Pulse Audio to exist yeah. and, and all that stuff. So, I mean, also, if it wasn't for Red Hat, I mean, the Linux desktop would be shite compared to where it is now. Like, they're responsible for a lot of the improvements. Also, I will go ahead and say, pointing out that Lin Leonard Pottering, however you say his name, I'm, I'm always going to butcher it, but anyway, has been a douche to people. Yeah, you can't use that against him. Like, dude, people send him death threats. Like, death threats. And also, a lot of people hate him for making Pulse Audio. And like, look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Pulse Audio and, well, any Linux audio solution is rife with problems. Okay? There's, there's no doubt about it. But if you think that Pulse Audio 
is not a major improvement over Alsa. Seek help. You can't like you can get help. Trust me. It, you're not alone. Okay. All right. Get help. I don't. I. I. I don't know. Like I. To me personally, I don't think corporate influence is necessarily a bad thing. I think it's good to be wary about it because, well, it's just it's good to be war- wary about most things in general, especially when it comes to big money, big influence. But most of the players in the Linux space aren't that bad. Like, as as much as a big corporate entity can be bad, Red Hat, comparatively, if you look around the landscape, doing pretty good. Like, pretty good. As much as people want to hate on it, it's doing pretty good. You can point to several incidents where they you know didn't do good where since they were bought by ibm that they were more capitalistically inclined you know that's true like absolutely true and and very fair like the the whole putting the source code behind a paywall not great look okay for an open source company that that has prided itself on being the open source company right but (laughs) Just because, just because someone's a douche, Drew in in, in the in the chat, like just because someone is a j- douche, <laughs> doesn't necessarily me- make their accomplishments, you know, automatically something that you shouldn't use, right? For example, it, anyone who drives a Ford, if you have this point of view, you probably should stop because Henry Ford was a blatant anti-Semite. Same thing if if you own Volkswagen, they supported Hitler. Like we have pictures, right? There are literal pictures of the 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 Porsche, the Volkswagen and Porsche dudes with Hitler. Like they, the reason why the bug looks the way the bug looks is because of uh, of Hitler. So there you go. If you drive one of those, you're a Nazi. <laughs> you know, just, like, like, the, I mean, if if the the transitive property exists because you know this guy's a douche, therefore we shouldn't use System D. Then that also has to exist. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. so so just just because you don't like someone's politics, like everybody, I think everyone mostly agrees that Richard Stallman is a little weird to put it, you know, PC. Like he has some oh, very weird. That was weird, very polite. Yeah, very he has some polite. very very weird you know, thoughts in his head that he's published online for people to actually see. Now, some of those things he's walked back, but honestly, once you talk about, you know, children in that manner, you really can't walk that back, right? <laughs> like, people, once it's out there, it stays out there forever. But just because that's true doesn't mean that GNU is also a bad thing that you should never touch. Everyone he, who uses Linux uses something that the that, that the GNU organization ha- has created. Like, you definitely do, and, and and people are like, "Oh, I'm on Void Linux. I, I use uh, I don't use uh, the the GNU Core Utils or whatever. I'm an Alpine. Is it Alpine Linux that has nothing yeah. to do with GNU? Yeah. And I use okay, okay. I mean, good for you, but most people don't have that weird situation where they think, "Well, this guy's a bad guy, therefore we shouldn't use the thing that he cr- helped create." And if you do have that situation, there's so many things that were created by people who weren't necessarily the best people that you just could never use. You'd go live in the woods, you know. I mean, you, you can't take you can't take in the the account of the personality of the person who creates stuff or or has the association with. It. At least I couldn't, just because you, you you can't know the history of everybody. I mean, you, there are a lot of assholes out there, and sometimes you have to use their shit. Well, I'm pretty sure there was a guy in history who invented. I, th- I think it was like something to extract nitrogen out of the air, like s- something like that. And because of his invention, he saved like millions of lives through like through being able to make fertilizer and, you know, keep crops going. But so at the same time, he got the Nobel Peace Prize for that. He was also being convicted of war crimes because like s- some of the same stuff that he was working on was used as like gas or something like that in like the war. So, yeah, somebody can, like, do something really incredible and at the same time do something absolutely horrific. I think it's kind of just having nuance, uh, but that can be difficult. Okay. <laughs> and, and 
we're not saying that you can't be morally opposed to, you know, Hitler. <laughs> like, you definitely <laughs> should be. You should yeah, definitely yeah. should be, right? But I don't think we can correlate Hitler with Red Hat I, I, or Leonard P- Leonard Pottering, whatever his name is. I don't think he's Hitler, okay? Like, you can disagree with him, but you, he's not Hitler, so it sh- it's still okay to use System D, right? <laughs> I, may, maybe that line is too high. Like, may, may, maybe uh, my standards for being evil shouldn't be Hitler. It should be something a little bit lower. <laughs> you know, true. But <laughs> we're so getting canceled. <laughs> we're getting canceled, demonetized, and we're going to end up in jail for hate crimes. <laughs> Something's going to happen to us if we're not going to be here next week because somebody's going to murder us or something. The the idea, though, is that you have these, the, you know, if you have moral qualms with the people who created the things that are normally used, that's fine. That's a personal opinion that is reasonable to hold. Like, I don't particularly care for Linus Torvalds. I think he is overly aggressive sometimes. Also, I think that, not necessarily him as a person, but it worries me a little bit that he still has so much control over the Linux kernel. Because what happens when the dude decides to retire or die? You know, you're like, what what happens then? Does, does he have a plan in place to the point where when he decides to retire that there's someone who's going to take over. Because all the guys who are around him, the, the vast majority of the, the Linux kernel developers, are his age. So they're all going to go about the same time. So what hey, happens Can I make then? a bet? Can I make a bet? Sure. I, I bet that it's in his will that when he dies, the last fuck you to NVIDIA is the kernel developers nuke all of the NVIDIA support kernel level. <laughs> Just with a gigantic middle finger, just pointing. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Bye, bye, Nvidia nuke. <laughs> well, I, I know GKH has been selected, but correct me if I'm wrong. But isn't he like the same age as Linus Torvalds, or thereabouts, like within ten years or something? Like, sure, he's he's a solution for a little while, maybe, but it's not going to be forever. But, but that's even that's really beside the point, right? It's it's just that he still ha- has all this control, and if you don't like him, it's hard to use Linux if you stand on the 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 hill of not using something made by someone you don't like, right? Oh, hold on, hold on. But can we be honest though? Like, so the biggest argument against Linus Torvalds is he speaks his mind, and a lot of times he can come off like an ass. Yeah. Isn't that like I would rather have somebody who can be an ass and might piss me off but speak their mind than someone like, you know, someone coming out from Micro Shaft who's going to lie to your face nine times and then tell you that they're going to give you a treat, bend you over a table, take your wallet out of your back pocket, and, you know, do some terrible things to you. I, I'd much rather pick the first dude who's going to be a little bit of an ass, like, than, well, you know. We we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, where developers aren't all, 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 all develop a lot of developers aren't necessarily the most socially inclined people, right? Um, yeah. He he's just another example of that, and that's not you know anything unusual. And, and he obviously doesn't have the same uh, level of vitriol pointed at him for the same reasons, at least as like uh, Richard Stallman does. Like he has other. Stallman has other reasons why people don't like him. He's more of yeah. a controversial subject than Torvalds is. But the, the which I don't get it. Like who doesn't eat their toenail? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> sorry. Like can I just close the camera? Like <laughs> whoops. <laughs> it, it's just it, it feels weird to me. Just from a personal perspective, it feels weird that people have taken this to this level where. The reason why I don't like something is because I don't like the person who develops it, right? It, it, it feels too personal to me, but maybe it's just because I can disassociate that better than, you know, other people, and that's just fine. But the, the, ration, the, the rationale behind not using System D because it is, you know, developed by a corporation who has corporate interests, but also developed by people who have flaws is weird because all people have flaws. <laughs> if, if you're looking for a developer who is 100% all, always 
an awesome person, like has never done anything bad in their entire life, has never said anything stupid, has never gotten a traffic ticket or whatever, you're going to be very disappointed and have nothing to use. You know, Dude, I spent yeah, I spent a lot of time on Discord talking to people, and trust me, even the nicest people you know will say some wild shit sometimes. Like, I mean, it's just people are people, man. Like, you can't expect someone to be the most finely etiquette like or have the most finely tuned etiquette at all times like that's just not how people work absolutely also what's the problem with like i i don't know i i don't see a problem with somebody messing up or doing something they shouldn't like there's multiple times where linus is, uh, linus has actually admitted that he probably should not or not probably he should not have behaved the way that he did that seems like a pretty good character trait to publicly like you know be like yeah i was in the wrong well, there i mean like, to, to, to be fair he, he did only do that after it was pointed out to him but good point <laughs> good point very good point he he did he, since that happened he does seem to have gotten better like he's still very blunt but he's European, you know, <laughs> like, like, I don't know if you've ever met a European. Most of them are blunt in some, especially, I mean, I, you know, he's not, I don't think he's German, but you know, the, the, if you deal with open, the open Sousa form very often, like they're very, very blunt. Like they don't, they don't waste time. They say it like it is. A lot of Europeans are, are just like that. So there's that. So, and, he, and he got better afterwards, but he's still very blunt, but I'm just imagining this, Tyler. We're going to get an email from someone that says, I'm sorry, I can no longer watch your podcast or listen to your podcast anymore because I cannot handle the fact that you are a po blatant apologists for fill in the blank. Like it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be the RMS yeah. comments. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's going to be the things we said about, you know, and Hitler, some, it's going to be something weird like that, or, or not weird, but, you know, something blatant that or we said about that. Or me about, you know, Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to come, we're definitely getting canceled for that. Uh, absolutely. So first off, we're sorry, okay? We'll, we'll just apologize right now. We'll come on to our public apology now. We're, we don't, we're, we're sorry for. Yes, yeah, so we are publicly flogging ourselves right now. You're welcome. We say shit, okay? But that's a... <laughs> Steve says I'm sending that email now. <laughs> ah, thank you, Steve. Hey, Linux cat, what butt you kicking? What the fuck? One minute it's System D, now butts. Yeah, I love big butts, and I cannot lie. Steve, get Sir Mix a lot out of your brain, bro. I'm just... <laughs> Anyways, we're we're definitely, but I think that that uh, us saying things that we're definitely gonna get canceled over is prime example of the fact that we're flawed people. We say shit on this podcast all the time. Well, yeah, but that's also us being real because people aren't clean and PC all the time. Like you have opinions that might upset somebody. Like I think there's a level of dishonesty that goes with acting like you don't have those kind of opinions or that behavior doesn't exist with you. Cause that's just also people can see right through that. Like there's nothing more off putting than someone who seems like they're a super too nice guy. Like, they're always super nice. It's like, what do you do in your free time, man? Like, you know, Th that, like, yeah, that there's a level of definitely nice that you're... has bodies like in the yeah. walls. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Like, like there's a level of nice <laughs> where like it, 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 it uh, like it comes with a level of distrust. Like, <laughs> like there's a level of nice where you're like, this can't be real. Stop. Like that guy's definitely putting on masks. Yeah, it's a, a, exactly. And, and Yes, there are things that people can say, things that people can do, you know, below Hitler, you know, <laughs> just not, not quite to the Hitler, but you can be an asshole, like a super asshole. You can also have really weird views like RMS does. Uh, that's, that's what his, his initials are, right? Like, like Stallman does. Um, you, really weird fucking views. And um, we can argue about him all the, all, you know, for an entire episode if we wanted to, but I, I, where my perspective comes in is just that just because he's weird, borderline pedo, whatever, you know, and eats his toenail cheese, as Trafferton said in, in, in the in the chat, just because that stuff's true doesn't necessarily mean that GNU is the worst thing ever. Now, 
also this should be an inspirational story to everybody in like listening to this if you think that you can't get something done or you'll never accomplish something i want you to think about the fact that a man who publicly eats his toenails made gnu and is successful so Use that as inspiration and remind yourself of that anytime you're feeling down or feel like you can't accomplish something. Just know you can. There is absolute, it may take time, but you'll get there. Okay. If toenails can do it, so can you. You're welcome. First off, if his nickname isn't toenails, it definitely should be. (laughs) (laughs) Picaroco, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong. It says he, uh, Leonard Pottering, which is what is really not Leonardo Potter. His name. <laughs> Leonardo Potter? <laughs> <Park. laughs> <laughs> hurts dogs for fun. Uh, I don't think that that's true. <laughs> but if it is, let me know, because then I'll stop using <laughs> System D. Because <laughs> that's, that's the line, okay? If you hurt puppies, I don't like you anymore, and I won't use your shit. Leonardo Potter. <laughs> <laughs> It got me. I don't know why it got me so good. That's so funny. It's like a Leonardo Potter. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Alexi, if you can't accomplish something, start eating your toenails. Thanks, Tyler. Got it. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. You're welcome anytime. Okay, so, okay. So the, the, the thing is, just to, to bring it back to System D, now we've completely gone off track. It's just that It's a thing that you use, okay? And the vast majority of people who use Linux use SystemD. The vast majority of people who use SystemD can do so without correlating it with its creator or with the company that continually, you know, maintains it now. You know, most people can do that because they don't know any better. And the people who do know better, either you can't disassociate the creator and the maintainer from the product, in which case you go use run it, or you're like me and you don't care. Like I don't. Well, no, but see, the thing is, is like when it comes to system D, I don't even think you can use that argument, like separating the person from like, okay, most people, if they're an ass, like that's, that's one thing you could probably use as a negative. This man wrote an init system and got death threats and people genuinely fucking hate him. Like, yeah, you're good. Dude, if you're getting death threats and people hate you because you made Pulse Audio and System D, like, let's be honest, Matt, put yourself in his shoes. Are you probably going to be known as a really nice guy? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Like, when, when, like, a whole bunch of people are telling you, like, you're the worst thing that's ever happened to Linux and, like, you work your fucking ass off. And the person who is most likely writing this is probably using something that you've worked on and is like integral to their life. Uh, I think, okay, so this is going to come across as a really old guy thing to say, but, and and it's probably not 100% true because I can't put a poll out there and say, how old are you and and what init system do you use? But it feels like a lot of the people who are, are really high on the hog in terms of Anti system D. Like, there's some people just use run it or system in it for the other reasons. Like, you know, it's faster or because they think system D is bloated. But the people who are like vehemently against system D as a thing because it's, you know, anti corporate, because they're anti corporation or they don't like the creator or whatever, it feels like they're more of the younger generation. The people who didn't, uh, didn't use Linux in the 90s and early 2000s who don't know. That when you wanted to use audio in the past, chances are either it worked or it didn't. Those were the options. And most of the time, it didn't. <laughs> you know, like, like it, it just, or you had to have a degree in audio engineering to get it to actually work and function the way that you wanted it to. It wasn't just you plugged something in and it worked, which is. Most people who use Linux these days, that's their experience. You plug in a microphone on Linux and it works, you know, mostly. I mean, unless you're having a bad day. (laughs) And I mean, like, there's also the fact that, like, most people nowadays, if if you're who you're talking about, that that newer generation who doesn't, you know, it didn't experience having to use also like, you know, 
before or for whatever reason like just using also and like avoiding pulse audio. like if pulse audio is all you know i could easily see being like i don't even know why they'd make this shit it's like it you know it breaks pretty frequently it has issues but even then like look at the other options you have like is jack really all that much better like is it all that much easier to use really like do you want to use also like they they all have their own issues and problems but i think at the end of the day i don't think you really want to go back to anything else like i don't I don't think most people would just drop pulse audio and go use Jack. Like, you know, like, I don't even know if that's an option. I don't even know if you can do that. I don't know. Can you like, could you use Jack with like discord? Well, you, Jack just sits on top of Jack is you, the J, Jack, at least as far as I know, requires pulse audio in order to work. Like you can't, oh. you can't oh, use them. Okay. So, you know, that QPW graph thing where you can kind of like draw lines between things. That's basically what Jack is, but for pulse audio. So it requ requires the audio system underneath it in order for, for it to work. That's, gotcha. that's okay. Now, all that, that being just goes said, to show how much said, I've used Jack. Yeah. All that, all I said, I've used Jack exactly one time. So I've already exhausted all of my knowledge of what Jack is. So uh, I do, I do know that people who do serious audio stuff still prefer to use Jack because it's oftentimes more powerful than what is still available on Pipewire. But I, I don't know if that's still the case or not. Uh, so maybe may, Alexi says Jack existed before Pulse Audio, so maybe you can use it with Elsa. But as far as I know, it sits on top of the audio stack. So, but I don't could be completely wrong. The the thing the thing is, is just I don't I don't think that people realize how good we have it. <laughs> I mean, granted, I was not around in the early '90s to. I mean, I was around, but I wasn't using Linux in the early '90s. I didn't use Linux for the first time since. In, until 2003, well, 2002 ish, and that was the first time I used Linux. And even then, it wasn't a fantastic experience when it came to audio and getting Wi-Fi to work. Okay, like there were serious issues with getting those things to work on hardware. Like, and it wasn't just like, oh, oh I have an issue, but the vast majority of people can get it to work. It was like everyone had issues. If you wanted to get Wi-Fi to work. Chances are you had to have a specific Wi-Fi card to get it to work. And if you didn't have that Wi-Fi card, you weren't using Wi-Fi. These days, the vast majority of people... I don't think anybody nowadays... I, j just sorry to cut you off, but just so everyone watching this knows. Like, nowadays, you can go to the store and pick up a Wi-Fi adapter, one a, a little USB Wi-Fi adapter, and nine times out of ten, it's just going to work on Linux. Do you know how long... That was not the case. Do you know how long Best Buy, every other electronic store near you would have like 20 different USB little Wi-Fi dongles and not a single fucking one would work on Linux. And you'd have to go to the store, pick up one, try it out because none of them would claim to have Linux support, even if it did support Linux. So you'd have to grab one, take it home, try it out, bring it back, grab a different one, take it home, try it out you're blessed today where you can go into a store and just grab a Wi-Fi adapter and walk out and like not worry about it. Like, God bless. I hated those days. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's just true. It's just, we have it very good. And, and there's still a portion of the community that is, I want to call them ungrateful assholes, but sometimes it feels like that way. No, no, it's not guys. We're not generalizing the vast majority of people who use, sys5 and run or whatever perfectly fine people the the vast you know they they just use it because you know they like to be the rebel it, they're contrarian they prefer it because it's faster maybe it works better on their hardware whatever there there are very legitimate reasons why you don't want to use system d outside of the, the the weird the the political one you know and, and all this stuff is great because there's one last thing we should talk about and that is standardization the Linux community abroad hates standards, man. They just hate the fact that standards exist, and they think that a, a standard thing that is controlled by one singular entity is not a good thing. And you can argue, again, that that's absolutely true. Um, but also, guys, standards are actually sometimes good. 
because it, it, at least from a developer standpoint, the fact that System D is the biggest thing in the Linux sphere means that they don't have to worry about developing things for 42 different init systems and everybody's using something different. It's, you know, we've actually managed finally to pull some pieces of software into the Linux sphere that didn't exist 10 years ago. Like, you know, obviously Adobe is still not here, but you know, we, we have things like Spotify and we have OBS that actually works and we, we have all the browsers that you could possibly want. You know, we have, we have these things and software development seems to be in a place right now where people can actually say, well, you know, because I can use Flatpak or snaps or whatever, I can actually push my software and not have to worry about publishing to nine different repositories. That's all great. But can you imagine that situation being such as it is if, they also had to worry about the fact that every distro they want to be on also has a different init system. It'd make it so much worse than it already is. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you just think about it, like, so like, let's say, let's make it super simple. Like, let's, let's say you wanted to make a service for your program so it could detect something and automatically the program comes, comes like launching up, the window launches up from the background. Do you, would you rather, write one service that supports an entire OS, like operating system, like Windows, you write one service, it works. M Apple, you write one service, it works. And then, you know, Linux, you write one service, it works. Or would you like it if every single platform had seven different options? And also some people would like it implemented in a way that mixes two. You got free time? <laughs> you, you really like working on this project you could be doing it for a while well it would just mean it would just mean less software is, is what it would would mean right just less software not only from big developers but also small ones would be able to do it it would also mean i mean we bitch and moan about fragmentation all the time it'd be more fragmentation because developers who decided they were going to go through with developing something for linux would just develop for one init system like one standard like or, or one thing like, they, like it would only work on ubuntu like that's all it would work on like if you wanted to use x piece of software it, it well, would only work hold on, on ubuntu. Hold on. actually you, you brought up a great point when you said Ubuntu, because someone said in the con uh, or in the chat, I wouldn't use Linux if it was all standardized. Linux is standardized around Ubuntu. Like, let's be dead honest. It's standardized around Ubuntu. If you run something different, it's a luxury that it goes to that. Like, almost all enterprise software is developed and tested, especially when it comes to like, you know, the program has a desktop use case. Like, that's where it's going to be tested for. Everything else is a privilege. Most things are standard standardized around Ubuntu. And I also don't think that would be a problem because here's a big point to make. Microsoft is standardized. And one of the big problems with them and Apple is they actively work. The standardization is not just there. It actively works against you doing something different. In Linux, that's not true. Like, yes, systemd is the standard. But the only reason that you would really have a problem using something different than system D is just because the developers haven't written a service for it or, you know, you got to, you know, know how to write your own services. I don't think that's a big challenge for most people to overcome. Like if you, if you want to do something different than the standard, there's not an active movement to stop you. Like no one's, no one's trying to stop. You. No one prevented them from creating run it or open RC or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, Sys5 has been around for a lot longer than System D has, and it's still around. It's still kicking, right? It's it's still there. Just like um, you know, like we've standardized basically around the Linux kernel, right? The Linux kernel is basically there for all distros, right? You're just gonna use the standard stock Linux kernel. Obviously, there are different variations, but it's still Linux kernel, right? But GNU herd still exists, okay? Like it's still there. Nobody, by the way. I put out a call on Tech Over T for people to contact me if you actually used GNU Herds. I'm still putting that out there. Have not heard from a single person. But you can go to the website. They're still developing that thing. It still exists. Nobody stops them. Somebody probably should Wait, stop hold on, them. Wait, hold on. Have you ch so you you said you have checked on GNU Herd? How recent was that? No, no, no. no. Well, it, the the website or whatever is still like there was an update in 2023 on their website. The only reason I asked that is I would be curious to see like how active development is on GNU herd 
mainly just because like I, I don't does anyone in this chat like anyone anyone in here if you run GNU herd as your main system please let us know I'm okay so very right. interested so on the screen right now their last entry was quarter four t was 2023 q4 so december probably like it looks like they post about once once a year once a quarter or so like a de there's actually like a de debian gnu herd so like you, if you wanted to run debian with gnu herd you could do that apparently and um, that was released in 2021 there's another one that was released in june of 2023 for de <laughs> that's actually a thing so but i haven't ever met anybody who does it right it, 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 apparently somebody... leonardo in chat does or leonardo sorry i'm again butchering usernames sorry but yeah we got one person email at the linuxcast.org proof or doesn't exist yes uh actually uh discord call after this uh my server <laughs> we, we 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 i i'm desperate to find someone who actually uses it because somebody told me that they were going to try i want to hear i want because it's an Ooh, alternative hold on, hold on. Don't. Uh, D Dub said, "Yeah, the 2023 herd change was updating the copyright change to 2023." The points, okay, you you can't hold that against them. DWM literally did that for 6.2. Okay, and since then they've updated it a couple times, but that was literally all they did was change one line to the version number. That's all they did, and that was after years of being on 6.1, like years. Now they've, like I said, they've since updated more, but. That doesn't mean that's not still updated. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is a legendary. But like as much shit as you can hurl the suckless suckless dude's way, that is probably the the boldest move I've I've ever heard of. Years of not updating, and I mean it's DWM. You really don't have to. But anyway, uh, then they finally decide to give a version change, and the version change includes the version change. That's it was it was six dot one six dot two was literally one line it was that's what it was that's all it was now like I said I respect yeah anyways that uh, we probably could go on for a little while longer but we're gonna go ahead and move into the the, the nuggies of the week because uh, Nate asked for a short episode if we did not deliver <laughs> that is for sure Boyan Orion says herd only works well in an isolated VM environment at the moment uh, that doesn't actually surprise me all that much but. Even if you use it in a VM, I'd like to hear from you via email. Just send me an email, send me a screenshot of something, of you doing something in Herd or in a in a distro that uses GNU Herd. I'd love to see it, just because I have not. It's it's like fucking Bigfoot, you know. Does it exist? Does it actually exist? It says it exists, but does it really? I want to see it. Anyways, um, I'm, I'm very well, interested. So before we move on, I, I was going to say. So Darius has asked twice now. Why do you guys don't mention BSD? And mainly because, well, BSD is like an actual like operating system. You can really, really run. Herd is not. So it's a little bit more interesting to talk about. Also, read the title of the podcast. We'll just leave it there. Wait, hold on. Can you get System D on FreeBSD? Like, could you get it working? I mean, if you worked hard enough, probably. But why would you want to? It... it Good point. Good point. I mean, somebody that knows way more about BSD than I do would probably have to answer that to, to know for sure. But it seems like it'd be because you can basically do anything you want if you work hard enough for it. I mean, that sounds very. Uh, Alexi says no, um, and Alexi usually knows these things. So, <laughs> but um, I I would be quite contrary about that. Like, just say if you work hard enough for something, you probably could. But the amount of work you have to put into it is probably commensurate with the. Uh, the the outcome of of it so it 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 it'd probably be very very difficult if if it's possible at all but also again why would you put the effort in because it has its own uh, in its services and stuff so anyways moving on to the nuggies of the week if guys by the way by the way if you have thoughts on the whole system d argument that we didn't cover or that you just you know have your own personal opinion either leave them in the comment section below or email us and we'll cover them on a, on a future episode because we would love to hear from you guys. Uh, user feedback slash user interaction is always a good thing. And it's not just the, the chat. So if you want to actually take part in the chat in the future, you can always do so by heading over to the LinuxCast uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash LinuxCast. Subscribe. We do this every Saturday. Record every three at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And then you can be in the chat and be awesome just like everybody who is here. 
and not awesome like the people who are not here. Well, you're, you're kind of awesome, but you're not as awesome as, as if you're here live. <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble. Anyway. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I am sweating balls. I've got, I turned that heater on and I forgot. And I thought I was getting sick for a second. Cause I'm like, dude, I'm getting real hot. Like, I don't know what's going on. Dude, I just now realized it's probably like 85 degrees in this freaking room. I will do my nugget of the week. You go turn that off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So my nug. I, I, my nuggies of the week for the, the for the foreseeable future will probably be books, just because I've been reading a lot uh, when I've had time. Uh, and the last book that I finished was a cozy fantasy called Legends and Lattes. It is a, a fantastic book. Let's let me actually look at the author's name. The the author's name is Travis Baldry, and it is a fantastic little book. It's very short and very. Uh, low stakes so if you're gonna get in it's not very it's not high fantasy it's it's very short and it's basically it's a coffee shop fantasy is basically what it is uh quite literally it, it's very 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 just low level uh very you know dare i say sweet you know the the character interaction is, is very good so if you're into cozy fantasy it which I didn't think I was into cozy fantasy, but I read that and it was my first five star uh, of the of the week of the year. So uh, very good book. Uh, definitely check it out if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, right now I'm you I'm I'm 30 pages away from finishing Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, and uh, I, I desperately want to get back and finish that book. Cause had that book th that book, Brandon Sanderson guys, that boy knows how to write. Very very good. Anyways, uh, that's my nuggie of the week. Check it out if you want to. Tyler, your Nuggie of the Week. My Nuggie of the Week is is going to be uh, kind of different because it's not really a piece of software. Actually, what it is is I want to recommend absolutely phenomenal TV show I've been watching recently. You can you can get it on Netflix. I think it's on pretty much every other streaming platform. Pretty sure, but Designated Survivor, if if you want a good show with like political drama, which I mean is, is what it is. Like I'm not super big into politics, but at least the drama aspect of it, I find interesting and like how people are screwing each other over and like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's got action. It's got hot girls for those of you out there that, you know, like this and appreciate this hot guys as well. It's, it's got everything dude. It's got all the actors are actually really good like really, really good, like phenomenal actors. It's a great show. I really like it. The story is interesting. And um, yeah, it, that's been something that I haven't really started binging a show recently. Like I've been watching Doctor Who, but I, I have always liked Doctor Who, but I haven't really been binging it. Me and my mom have started binge watching this together. It's a very good show. like it. And it's also not, you know, it's not the new tv shows that come out where it's like you know it's not something you you definitely couldn't watch with you know your mother or family so it's nice it's a good show good writing too that sounds awesome ty i'm gonna have to check that out give it a go i mean like the opening episode is at, for a pilot it is a damn good opening like it really does get you interested and it's also not slow just so you know that's another thing I'll say for those of you who can't get into a show. If it's slow, this one's not slow. So def definitely, definitely check it out. It's a great show. Cool. All right. Someone asked what the future of open Susa leap is real quick. I put a link in the chat. You can check the, it's called the adaptable Linux platform. That's going to be the future of open Susa leap. Um, they, there is going to be a version 16 of leap, but it's going to be like the last one ever. Probably. Um, it's very the the future of it is very very up in the air. Um, I know it's been fifth on fifteen for a very long time. Just pro tip: if you're going to use OpenSUSE, just use Tumbleweed. It's it's the best. All right. Anyways, that is it for this episode of the Linux Cast. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. The best way is to head on over to the website, which is available at the LinuxCast.org. There you'll find previous blog posts that I've posted. Also, every single episode all the way back to season one. If you want to binge those things, I swear that someone actually did that. Somebody said, I've been binging all of the episodes all the way back to season one. You poor sod. <laughs> Some of those oh. are Ooh. not great. That's a, 
<laughs> that's a lot of catch up. Yeah. That's a lot. Because we've done over 150 episodes, by the way. So, uh, actually, I'm not, what, what episode number are we on? High number, dude. <laughs> We're on like, well, I know the show notes, like, numbering is a little different, but it's about like 807. Well, no, 808 is, so that's just the season. season. Yeah, yeah and, I, uh, I, I know. But I put it, the episode ID that's at the top of all the show notes is the episode number. I literally never paid attention to that. So one, 134. So I guess we're not quite at 150 yet. So 134 is where we're at. Close enough, brother. Close enough. Yeah, we're, we're well, maybe we'll have to do something special for 150. Cause <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be getting there this year, somewhere in the 150 range. But anyways, um, head on over to the, the website. That's where you find all of those previous episodes. If you want to actually uh, see those, the, the video, if there is a video and all the audio is there as well. Uh, you can find all of Tyler's contact information on the website as well, but you can head on over to his YouTube channel, which he actually does have a YouTube channel. He just doesn't use it consistently. Yes, my upload schedule is terrible. I apologize. Also, before we continue on with this phenomenal, phenomenal portion of the show, um, just know I will be in Matt's Discord server after this call in one of the voice chat rooms. So if you want to come talk, swing on by. Just thought I'd go ahead and throw that in there. YouTube.com slash ZNEOG if you want to check that out, because he will eventually post again. Probably after his next call out from open from uh, Mental Outlaw. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll change up my content completely. When, yeah. he shout, when he shouts me out for doing something, I'll change instantly. You're never going to live that down, ever. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll see to it. A anyway, I mean, anyway, that timing was crazy. It was it was great. Like, <laughs> like Biggest content creator in the Linux sphere calls you out about something you no longer do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right after I stopped doing it. Like, <laughs> Anyways, the linuxcast.org slash contact is where you'll find all of the contact information that you'll ever need, including the Discord servers, links to the email, links to Mastodon, all that stuff, linuxcast.org slash contact. Uh, you can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, or you can head on over to the store where you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, including stickers and hoodies and hats and t-shirts and desk mats and backpacks and all sorts of stuff. That's available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. I appreciate all those of you who have bought merch and uh, speaking of merch, Tyler actually has something on his body right now that is merch. Um, yeah, uh, the Nuggies t-shirts. Get one. Still available. Thank me later. Still they're available. phenomenal shirts. Dude, like these shirts, I'm telling you, man, they're they're comfy as hell. They're 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 just they're great. The the thing I had to buy one of these for my sister so she wouldn't take mine. Um cuz she loves penguins and she also loves Nuggies. So there I had go. to buy her a blue one. So, yeah, trust me when I say they are good shirts. And I laugh every time I see my sister in hers. It is genuinely hilarious. So just so you know, my sister is walking around town with that shirt on frequently. Very frequent. That's hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, shop.thelinuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all awesome uh thank you so much for for your support i truly do appreciate that and i did finally get the end screen credits actually up to date uh as of the last couple of days so uh, everybody should be in their proper place which is a good thing again so thank you so very much for your support if you want to watch us live we do record this live every saturday at three o'clock p.m eastern time we've never missed an episode um that's at an absolute lie um <laughs> but the vast majority of Saturdays, we're here at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on the Linux Cast YouTube channel, being awesome. You should come be awesome, too. So, we'll be here, here next week. We're going to do a tier list of color schemes. That's what we're going to do next week. So, that should be fun. Anyways, we'll see you next, next time. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye!